We're back with another 2019 college football team preview and prediction video today. And the first non-Power 5 team today, right? We've done, uh, I, I don't even know how many of these videos anymore, 15 or so. And all the teams we've done have either been Power 5 teams or we did Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame's still a Power 5 team. They're just not in the conference. Today, uh, the first non-Power 5 team, a group of five team. And this is a great example of one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these videos so much. And you hear me talk about this um, every once in a while in these videos. I learn a lot doing these videos, okay? Uh, sometimes I learn that my preconceived notions were correct. Sometimes I learn my pre uh, preconceived notions about a team could not have been further from the truth. Uh, and the latter is true for today's video. Up today, the team that Uncle Lou has spent all off season saying is gonna be the best a uh, group of five team in 2019, the Memphis Tigers. Good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yep, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today, so thanks for watching. A lot of comments about, am I only gonna do Power 5 teams or, or the bigger teams? No, I'm gonna do some of the uh, group of five teams, but of course I'm doing the Patreon suggestions first. So if you're one of these people that wanted to see some group of five teams, you can thank none other than Captain Krusty over on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. Captain Krusty, thank you for your support over on the Patreon page, sir. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you've chosen to support the channel directly over on the Patreon page. Big shout out to everybody over on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. There's a link in the description of this video that says support the channel. You can click that link. It'll take you over there if you want to get signed up on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. It really means a lot to me. Uh, but I appreciate the suggestion, sir. I'm going to do this video for you today. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year. and About half the time they're watchable. About half the time they're not. Um, this one will be watchable, at least to Captain Krusty, and hopefully to a few uh, a few others of you too. Give this video a thumbs up. Are you a Memphis fan? Give this video a thumbs up. Do those exist? I think they do. Give this video a thumbs up. Or if you just enjoy these uh, these in-depth preview series that we have going on, give the video a thumbs up. It doesn't take you any time or cost you any money, but it's a huge help to me. Thumbs up the video. All right, that's right. I learned a lot doing these videos. Sometimes I learn that uh, you know what I've sort of been thinking may be true. Sometimes I learned that what I've been thinking may not be true, and that's the case here. I, I have said on multiple occasions on the call-in shows that we do every Tuesday and Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, we have a live uh, call-in show that we do here on the channel. People have asked me, uh, what, do you know, what do you think about UCF, Boise State, who's going to be the best group of five team? Memphis. That's what I've been saying. I'm Memphis. I, I, I'm high on Memphis. I think Memphis has a chance to have a really good year. And I mean, everybody has a chance to have a really good year right now, right? Because it's the offseason. Everyone's undefeated. After looking, uh, after doing research for today's video on Memphis, look, you know, seeing what they did last year, who they lost, they got that sort of thing. I hope this isn't the best group of five team this year because if it is, it's going to be a down year for the group of five in general. I don't think Memphis is uh, anywhere close to the level of where we've seen a UCF be for the last couple of years, where we've seen Boise State be uh, in several years, where we saw Houston. A few years ago, I don't think Memphis is even in that same league. So hopefully there are one or two or more group of five teams that can put together a better season than Memphis, because I'm just going to be honest, not very high on Memphis overall after seeing what I've seen here. But uh, anyway, what did they do last year? Uh, regular season, they were eight and four. Then they lost the conference championship game to Central Florida. And then they lost a bowl game to Wake Forest, uh, Birmingham Bowl. Uh, so eight and four, uh, eight and four regular season, five and four in the conference. Kind of weird that five and four is kind of like the Big Ten West last year or ACC when Pitt won the that division last year. Five and four won the division. So that tells you not a very good division, a division with no elite teams, really. Um, that being said, they did play UCF close, particularly in the regular season. Uh, well, who'd they beat? What uh, Houston was a pretty good win. East Carolina was a pretty good win. Losses, uh, you lost to Missouri. 65 to 33, sure what happened there. Lost to something called Tulane, 
must have got caught up in the undertow of that green wave. I don't know. Uh, speaking of undertow, though, no more tool. Let me start it on that. And then, like I mentioned in the regular season, losing to Central Florida by one point. One of the best uh, group of five games all year, that Memphis versus Central Florida game. Now, fast forward to the conference championship game where you got to a rematch with Central Florida looking for revenge, and they beat you again, that time by 14. So like I mentioned, 8-4 and four in the regular season, losing the conference championship game and then losing the Birmingham Bowl to Wake Forest put you with an overall record last year of 8-6, and six, but you did win your division. It was the second year in a row uh, that you won that division. Head coach Mike Norville, 8-5 and five his first year, 10-3 and three his second year, and then 8-6 and six last year, right? This year, replacing almost his entire staff. He stays. Almost everyone else on the staff is gone, right? Uh, we'll see. Uh, some changes needed to be made. 0-3 in bowl games. Uh, anyway, uh, let's look at the offense here. Running back, Patrick Taylor Jr., over 1,000 yards last year, right? 16 touchdowns. You lose, uh, you lose probably, you lose Henderson and Pollard. They might have they might have even been better than Patrick Taylor. Patrick Taylor might have been your third best running back last year, and he had 1,100 yards and 16 touchdowns. So that's sort of a either the glass is half full or half empty, depending on how you want to look at it, right? It's great that you have this guy Patrick Taylor coming back. Anytime you can return a thousand yard rusher, that's a good thing. But you lose two of your running backs who who were huge contributors last year to the NFL. Got to find a replacement for that. You can't survive on one running back in today's college football. See uh, almost every single Auburn season ever under Gus Malzahn as exhibits A through uh, F or whatever it happens to be. Quarterback, Brady White. A good year. 3,300 yards and 26 touchdowns. That's, I mean, that's not elite. You know, you, 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 that's not Kyler Murray or Tua or Trevor Lawrence type numbers or whatever, but 3,300 yards, nothing to sneeze at. 26 touchdowns. Got him back. Wide receiver, probably the best. Well, I won't say probably but maybe the best wide receiver in the AAC. Best, maybe the best wide receiver in the conference, right? He went over 1,000 last year. DeMonte, what is this guy's name? DeMonte Coxie, again. Um, I don't name these people. Uh, it, it's just my job to do the best I can to pronounce uh, the names wrong, but I think it's DeMonte Coxie. Uh, nonetheless, offensive line, three starters return there so sort of a mixed bag i think on offense here got your quarterback back he had a good year last year that's positive you got a running back back who had a good year but you lose two other running backs who were who were big contributors they're going to the nfl got to find some help here for patrick taylor at the running back position not that he's not any good but again you need more than one wide receivers uh you you, you know you got the one is really really good can you find somebody to complement that and three starters back on the offensive line uh that's pretty good i think right I think anytime you got three or more offensive linemen returning, that's pretty good. If you got three or more that you have to replace, uh, maybe you throw a question mark there. Offensive line, I would assume, going to be okay. Now let's look at the defense. New defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller, right? Three or four defensive linemen return. Again, that's a benefit, right? Returning three or four, a lot better than having to replace three or four. Uh, you also have uh, a defensive lineman transferring in. Uh... I didn't write his name down now, and I'm drawing a blank, but he was a junior college All-American. You bring him in, he should have an immediate impact. Uh, at linebacker, you got Austin Hall, probably the leader of that defense. Uh, is he going to be a superstar in the NFL? Probably not, uh, but he's really, really good uh, for, for Memphis. I mean, he'll have another good year. Defensive back, two starters return there. So, that's what your offense and your defense is sort of looking like. You got to play better than you did last year, five and four. Uh, I mean, it's great that you won the division, but five and four, come on. Uh, I, I don't know. All right, let's look at the schedule and let's find out, is Memphis going to be the best team in a group of five this year, like I thought most of the offseason? And and it's still, a, people still think it. I'm just, I'm going to be honest with you. You can read some different articles, things like that. Some people are pretty high on Memphis. Uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, you start the season off with an SEC team, it's an automatic L. You're going to lose. Uh, doesn't even matter who it is, but I'll go ahead and tell you. Well, it's on the screen. Ole Miss. Uh, okay, I, I think Ole Miss beats you. Are they an elite SEC team? No. I think they'll be better this year than they were last year, though. They're going to beat you. Uh, you couldn't beat Wake Forest in a bowl game last year. I don't think you're beating Ole Miss, uh, even though for some reason you get them at home. I don't know what Ole Miss is doing here. Uh, so you're 0-1. Week 2, you play Southern. Uh, 
I got no hate for Southern, but you're going to get a win. You're one and one. On the road at South Alabama, see my comments about Southern, but you're going to win. You're two and one. That takes you into your first bye week, two bye weeks this year. Uh, in order for the football season to start when they want it to and end on the first Saturday in December with the conference championship games, it's an extra Saturday in there. Every team gets two bye weeks. Yours comes after week three. I got you two and one headed to your first bye week. Come out of that, you play Navy. Navy in for a rough year, I think, compared to where they've been the last few years. Um, now, I'm sky high on Army. Spoiler alert. I've got an Army-Navy preview coming up at some point heading, uh, leading up to the season. I'm going to do I, I do an Army-Navy preview, uh, mainly out of respect every single offseason. I'll be doing that again this offseason. I don't think Navy is going to have a very good year. I think Army is a legitimate top 20 team, though. Uh, not, not, not even 25, top 20. I think Army is the real deal. Uh, anyway, you play Navy, you'll get a win. If he's playing Army, <laughs> you tote the L. Uh, but luckily, you're playing the, uh, the, the, the Navy here. So what does that put you? Three and one? Congratulations. On the road at ULM. Uh, what is that? Louisiana Monroe. Yes, win. Uh, you're rolling right along here. Started off with a loss. Now you reel off four wins in a row. Get to the mid part of your season. Got to go on the road to play Temple. Temple hired a great uh, head coach last offseason named Manny Diaz. So uh, No, he replaced football Jesus at Miami. Oh, yeah. Temple might be a better job, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think you go on the road and get a win at Temple. All right? Then you come back home and play Tulane. Let's remember, Tulane beat you last year. You got swept up in that, uh, whatever that, the undertow, whatever it was, the green wave. They beat you by a couple of scores, 40 to 24. You get revenge, and you beat them. So, you know, you're rolling, uh, you're rolling right along here. One, two, three, four, five. That's six wins in a row after dropping in your opening game to Ole Miss. On the road at Tulsa. Tulsa's another team that if you that if you just are, well, I don't want to say a casual fan, but if you're not specifically paying attention to the group of five, you might think Tulsa is a pretty good team because, like me, in my head, I can remember not that long ago, Tulsa scoring 60 and 70 points a game. Uh, those days are gone. Tulsa not a very good team right now. I think you go on the road and get another win. All right, then you come home, play SMU. Uh, you beat them last year, 28 to 18. I think you're going to beat them again. Again, you're rolling right along here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins in a row after dropping week after dropping your opening week game. To Ole Miss, you're sitting at eight and one, right? Or is that nine and one? Hell, I don't even know. Last three games of the season, not easy games. Pretty difficult. Starting off with at Houston, uh, up and down team. Coaching changes. Tom Herman was there for a while. Now he's gone, and they bring in uh, this guy from West Virginia. Uh, he's there now. Uh, we'll see what he does. They lost their best player from last year in Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver, a grown man. I, he, he, I mean, he's going to be the real deal even in the NFL. I think you go on the road, though, and get you another win at Houston. So, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I was right this offseason. Maybe you are the best group of five team. You lose to Ole Miss. Now you done reeled off, what, nine straight wins in a row? You're sitting at, or eight straight wins in a row. Uh, you're sitting at, uh, no, nine. Yeah, you're sitting at nine and one with two games to go. At South Florida and home against Cincinnati, uh, you're losing them both. I think I think both these teams are better than Memphis. This, this is mainly why I think I was wrong here um, about talking about uh, Memphis possibly being the best group of five team. After looking into some things, I think on the road at South Florida, I don't see you winning that game. I, I'm not sure how much better or worse South Florida is than you, but since you're playing them there is the main reason I gave you the loss. I do think Cincinnati is better than you. I have you losing that game there. So that puts you at 9-3. and three. I don't think 9-3 and three is going to be considered the best group of five team this year. I think Central Florida, even though I think they're tailing off a little from their height under Scott Frost, I can't see them losing three games this year. South Florida, I, I, obviously, I think is better than you. Cincinnati, I think, is better than you. Boise State plays Florida State week one. If they somehow beat Florida State, they're going to vault to the top of the a group of five teams in terms of who people are thinking may be the best. So nine and three is still a really good season, and nine and three will definitely be good enough for you to win your conference, or I'm sorry, win your division for what will be the third year in a row. That's the good news. Bad news is you probably have to play Central Florida again, and I don't think you'll beat them, especially if Mackenzie Milton comes back uh, uh, to pre-injury form. I just don't see it happening. But 9-3 and three, still a pretty good year for Memphis with a bowl game. You could get to 10 wins. Even if you lose your conference championship game and you're sitting at 9-4, and four, still the potential to get to uh, 10 wins with a bowl win, which would be great because I don't think you want a bowl game under uh, Norvell. You know, Norvell's 0-3 in bowl games. So get your first bowl win. You could finish the season, in my opinion, at 10-4 and four 
uh, after a loss to probably UCF in the uh, conference championship game. Anyway, that's it. The first group of five team that we've done. We're going to do some more. I, I really want to do Boise State. Uh, I'm going to do Army and Navy, like I mentioned, and there are a few others on the list. App State is actually on the list uh, for me to do, too. A few others. Anyway, we'll get to them. Like I mentioned, we still got three, four weeks till the season starts. Going to run through as many of these as we can. Uh, subscribe. Thumbs up. I appreciate you guys watching, and have a great morning.